Alright guys, welcome to a, another beer review, and uh, we're going gluten free for this one, and it's a very low ABV beer as well. I basically found in my little stash downstairs, um, like, two or three low ABV beers that I must have picked up from Beretta, so, due to them being quite low in ABV, I thought I'd get them done, or at least a couple of them. And uh, yeah, this is the last beer of the night. I mean, when they had um, the Omnipolo, uh, another session IPA, but it's been hopped as if it was an Imperial IPA. And uh, yeah, so we're going over to Denmark, and we're going to the ever-reliable Tuol Brewery, and we're looking at the Totem Pale, which is a gluten-free pale ale clocking in at a measly 2.2%. And as is per usual, beautiful, beautiful artwork from Kaspar Liedet. And this is my first Tuol can. Um, I won't lie, I love the designs on this, but I'd love to have the label so I could keep the label for myself. But I tell you what, definitely a striking um, can if there ever was one. And you can say that about a lot of the Tuol beers. Um, definitely... For me some of the best designed beers out there and thankfully from my experience the beers inside the bottle or the can seem to be pretty damn good too so uh, yeah a little bit of a spiel on the back the beer this beer is brewed to worship and honor people who drink responsibly we did our best to give you full flavor from stronger pale ales converted into an easy going hoppy pale ale and yeah it's gluten-free beer 2.2 uh, contains barley, oat, and uh, barley and oats, and it's actually got an ingredients list on the side in German. So water, roasted barley, uh, rye, oat flakes, hops, which I think are mosaic, and uh, tetina, if, if that's what it's called. I had a quick look on the website just to find out a little bit more about the beer itself, and of course yeast. So uh, yeah, just absolutely beautiful artwork. Anyway. Enough with the waffling, let's get it opened and see what we get. So I must have picked this up with uh, the summer months coming, um, but I obviously didn't get around to drinking it because uh, I had family over. So I don't think that it will be uh, too faded. Uh, best before date is the 17th of the 11th, 2017. Not too sure when it was canned on, but... Um, yeah, beer in a glass, and there's a tiny bit of haze in there. But uh, isn't that weird? That's the first thing you go to sometimes when you get like pale ales and IPAs is how hazy they are. All of this like New England IPA influence has just completely taken over. But uh, yeah, a tiny bit of haze in there. Um, lovely sort of uh, orangey colour. Slight amber tones in there as well. Nice and... Uh, Steady carbonation rolling up to about one figure's worth of uh, a mixture of small and compact looking bubbles. But uh, yeah, it's got like a real sense of paleness to it as well. So it obviously doesn't really look like a completely full bodied beer in the glass. But I think with the use of oats in there, it's going to help lift that body so it's not a watery mess. Or at least that's what I'm hoping. And I think this is, uh, it's like the younger brother let's say, of uh, another beer that these guys do, which, um, again, I can't remember, I had the information down below. Of course, information is uh, in the description box. But, uh, yeah, looks like a really nice pale ale so far, with some little intricacies to it, which make it stand out a bit. Anyway, let's see what we get on the aroma. And I'm getting, like, lemon sherbet, a little bit of, like, a slight blood orange in there. Like watermelon sweets, if that makes sense, like jelly beans. It's very, very subtle, but really, really nice. It's not a weak smelling beer by any stretch. But yeah, lovely, slight grassiness in there as well. Getting that ever so slight, savoury, garlicky, oniony sort of aroma that I sometimes get. But yeah, lovely sherbetty sort of hop character in this one. 
nice subtle citrusy tones in there as well and there's a fly who wants a little bit of my beer but it's all mine so you can't have it it's a frig off yeah it smells lovely let's give it a taste cheers it's definitely got the body of a 2.2 percent beer and it's actually I thought those oats would just bulk it up a little bit, but it is a tad watery, it has to be said. Very drinkable though. And I'm getting like a, like a thin fruit juice, but I can't put my finger on what sort of juice it would be. Like as if you, the freshly squeezed something very citrusy into a glass. You've not like added any of the flesh or anything like that. You've not um, put it in the processor with all the pulp or anything like that. It's like a really nice, thin, slightly carbonated fruit juice. Which is a great positive spin on it being watery. Finish is very watery though. Not too bitter either. So it's not an unpleasant bitter wateriness on the back end. Bitterness is just right with this one. Not had too much experience with uh, gluten-free beers, so I wouldn't be able to tell you how it compares to gluten-free beers, but I know that they get a bad rap. Um, the worst one that I had was from Riedenberger, and it just tasted like it was an unfinished beer, like it was just put into the bottle in the very early stages of the brewing process. It was like a cloudy, watery mess. I wasn't a big fan of it. <laughs> but this... Yeah, it is like very slightly alcoholic fruit juice. More along the lines of like lemon, almost like a bitter lemon sort of thing going on with this one. Hints of lime, a little bit of like a, a lemongrass character as well. The rind of an orange maybe. Slight sweetness of a blood orange. Very, very subtle grapefruit tones. Those savoury elements that I got on the aroma don't come out through the in the taste. Which is a good thing. But you know what, if you were... You know, designated driver for the evening and you didn't just want to go down an alcohol free beer route you wanted to have at least a couple of beers but it wouldn't affect you too much flavor wise nothing wrong with this beer to be honest it's just uh, the style itself it's a low alcohol gluten free beer Alarm bells would be ringing for a lot of people, I'd imagine, and it's on the phone. Looks like a cream pie now in the in the can. But uh, yeah, it's definitely built up a bit in terms of its presentation now. A lot more haze in there. Let's see if we get anything else on the flavour. It's got that slight spiciness you'd expect from rye in there. Not too sure how much they've used. But you do get that very subtle spicy tone from that. That's just all foam now, so it's pointless me putting it in. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh... Tell you one thing, sure. This is probably my, the least enjoyable to-all beer that I've had. And uh, I was praising um, the the session strength of the um, Atsakel or Tsakel or something like that from... Uh, um, Omnipio, which I think is like a, a session strength version of Nebuchadnezzar, because it's got similar artwork. And that, that was a really great session strength beer. Granted, it's like 1% higher than this one, but it just had a bit more oomph to it. This is just really quite lacking. Flavour-wise, nothing too wrong with it. Slightly fruity, more citrusy than anything else. You get slight... Uh, earthy rye tones coming in like a rye bread sort of characteristic but when I saw oats in that I thought oh 
this could be, you know, have a really pleasant mouthfeel. For me, like I was saying, it's like a slightly alcoholic, carbonated, fresh fruit juice. Which is not a bad thing, but in terms of the beer itself, is it one that I'd pick up again? I don't think so. Um, I'm glad that I've tried it. Uh, would I try another gluten-free beer? Yeah, I'd be interested to give that sort of style a go. Has it changed my mind really on session strength beers? No, not really. Um, I'll do them every now and then on camera and that sort of thing, but I never purposely, unless it was a really good beer, go out my way to pick up like a, a lower than 3% beer, to be honest. It, it's just... It serves its purpose, I suppose. Yeah, it's an ode to the people who respect alcohol and drink responsibly, but... I think they could have picked a better beer to celebrate that, to be honest. Uh, in terms of a rating then, uh, I'm going to give this one, it's going to be, and this seems like quite a low score, and it is actually, it's a 6 out of 10. Um, I'm just not really enjoying it too much. Nothing wrong with the beer in its uh, ex in the way it's been made. Always a high quality product I've found from Tool. But it's just not doing anything for me. It's pleasant enough. It's drinkable. As you can see, I've nearly finished the beer already. So it's going to be an awkward thumbnail. And uh, yeah, it's just... I don't think I gravitate towards this type of beer again um, anytime soon. Even though the next beer that I will be reviewing probably tomorrow now is another low ABV to old beer. So we shall see how that turns out. Maybe I'll talk about that this week. You know, compare them even though they're two completely different styles but um yeah gluten free low abv not my thing so if you've tried this one as per usual your comments and opinions are welcome uh what sort of lower abv or even gluten free beers should i look out for which ones do you really really like uh just hit me up in the comments for what i think are much better to all beers i'm going to put the to all playlist down below of course uh links to to all and the various social media platforms down below as well as uh casper Liedert's links because you know beautiful artwork and if any of my friends or people who i follow on a regular basis have reviewed this beer their links are going to be down below too so i don't know why i'm starting to talk quiet now but it's the end of the video so thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you later. Cheers.